What's going on everyone? My name is Under the Radar and welcome back to the WBE. This is going to be the week 5 team builder. This week we are going up against Vivid and the South Texas Sableyes. Um, this game is a lot of really, really, really important. It has a lot of importance, so I'm trying to say. Um, if I win, my playoff hunt continues. If I win, Vivid is pretty much out of playoffs, almost guaranteed. He would have to like win out and some people would have to lose out in order for him to make it in. And the same goes if I lose. If I lose, I'm hurting to get into playoffs. Uh, so this is a must win. So real quick, let's go ahead and take a look at the team before uh, his like the team matchup before we go ahead and look at anything else. Also, let me know if you guys like the new camera. I worked really hard on this. I worked really hard to get this camera set up, and I love it. Big shout out to Elgato and the Cam Link. They didn't send it to me, but um, I'm still really happy with it. Anyway, um, so he has that is a GMAX Appleton, not Flapple, uh, just so we're clear. Um, and Driftblim, we also did trade. Uh, I traded him Driftblim, he gave me Sigalith, and realistically, I only did the trade because I thought Sigalith matched up well against him, so I wanted to have that. Um, yeah, so he has a lot of really, really, really big threats. Vivid made a lot of transactions this week to where he now has a lot of offensive power, whereas before this, he had, like, no offensive power. His offensive power lied in Vikavolt and Phalanx, which Phalanx I don't think had the best matchup versus me. Um, at least, like, on paper, I don't think it does, but, um, he also has a Grim Snarl, which is, like, one of the best checks to Dragapult, meaning that I don't really think that, uh, Dragapult has the best matchup. I think that a lot of, a lot of my standard threats just aren't that good versus my opponent, but I think that I can make some really, really cool, uh, really cool innovative stuff to bring versus Vivid. I'm bringing some really heat stuff. And I'm really excited for it. So first off, we have our Steelix here. Now, Steelix is holding the Choppleberry with 228 speed, 228 spadef, 52 defense with an impish nature. He's also rocking the sturdy ability, not sheer force this week. And his moves are going to be Autotomize, Iron Defense, Body Press, and Iron Head. Now, here's my thought process. This thing has a phenomenal matchup versus a lot of my opponent's team. He does not have a good switch into it, and this is also a really good switch into Grimmsnarl, which, realistically, I don't think he can bring, like, a bulk up Grimmsnarl to try to beat me 1v1. Even if he does, it will not beat me 1v1 because I will be iron defensing alongside of it. Anyway, um, this is going to be my main win con this week. This is what I want to win the entire game with. I have enough defense investment at plus two with body press to guarantee two shot Torkoal, meaning that if I'm able to weaken it a little bit, which is kind of sort of my whole strategy this week is bringing a bunch of physical spam to try to weaken his Torkoal or force in his Torkoal and then pressure him that way. That is pretty much my best way of winning. I have the Choppleberry with the Spadef investment to be able to live a special Lucario's either Vacuum Wave if I've already got up the Autotomize or Aura Sphere if I have the Iron Defense up and not the Autotomize. Um, I also have enough defense investment to be able to guaranteed two shot... Um, Okay, so let me go through the calcs. If I have the Iron Defense up, I two-shot G-Max Appleton, which I don't think will come this week. I uh, guaranteed uh, two-shot offensive Drift Blim with Iron Head. I guaranteed two-shot... Uh, okay, if he does not have up a no-retreat with his Phalanx, I one-shot at plus two defense with Body Press. I guaranteed two-shot... Grimmsnarl with Iron Head. If I have an Iron Defense up, I guaranteed two shot with Body Press as well. If I have two Iron Defenses up, I guaranteed one shot with Body Press. Uh, Lucario dies to Body Press. Mamoswine dies to a Body Press. Quagsire, if it's unaware, which I don't think it will be. I don't even think it'll come this week. Um, it's going to be a little annoying, but I do have a lot of things that can, that can, uh, that can pressure it. So uh, that is... That's that. Also, if he is Savali Ghost, that'd be a little problematic for this. But it, pr pretty much, if I'm able to weaken things the way that I'm expecting to be able to, I will I will be able to sweep him with this. And that's the hope. So, that is going to be the main win con this week. It does a lot of damage versus my opponent, and I'm really hoping that it just... I'm really hoping it does what I'm expecting it to. Next up, we have our G-Max Lapras. This Lapras this week is going to be completely Fizz Def with Freeze Dry, Surf, uh, Drill Run, and Brine. 
Uh, Max Fizz Death. I'm also rocking the Heavy Duty Boots this week. Uh, the reason why I'm rocking the Heavy Duty Boots is because I want to use this as my main Mammoth Swine switch in. If I'm able to switch in once and then Dynamax, I can start to pressure him a little bit with um, Freeze Dry, Surf, and Drill Run is there specifically just for the uh, Lucario. Now... I'm only bringing drill run, or I'm sorry, I'm only bringing heavy duty boots because I do think that my opponent has two good stealth rockers versus me in both um, Torkoal and Mamoswine. But I need to bring this for a freeze dry because it hits uh, Quagsire quad super effectively. I need to bring this for a freeze dry because it hits Appleton for a lot of damage. And Surf plus Brine do a lot of damage to the remainder of his team. If I'm able to get the adequate chip damage off early game that I want to, this could potentially be a late game breaker because of its bulk being able to live multiple hits and Brian being super, super strong if I'm able to get off the 50% on everything, which is kind of sort of what a lot of these uh, EVs are intended to do. So this is going to be the main Mammoth Swine check, as I said, but it is also there to ensure that I get up the Aurora Veil. It's also there to ensure that I uh, get a lot of damage off on pretty much everything. And it, it, it's a really good Pokemon this week. Next up, we have my failsafe. This is going to be the uh, Sigilyph Psychic Energy Ball Heat Wave Ice Beam. I have Ice Beam for Appleton. I have Ice Beam for Driftblim. I have Psychic for uh, the Thingamabobber. The Thingamabobber is the Caterpillar Fighting Roman Dude. We then have nothing for Grimmsnarl, which I'm okay with. Honestly, uh, I, I think it's not the end of the world. Also, I don't know why my capture card is lagging. I might need to figure that out. Because, like... I don't know why it's lagging. It's just weird. I might need to reset it and plug it into a different port. Who knows? Um, yeah, anyway. So I have enough speed for Silvali. And then this is meant just as a, a safety check. I do have Magic Guard plus Focus Sash, meaning that no matter how many hazards they get up, no matter what stealth rocks they get up, I'm going to be at uh, full health. I can live any one hit. If he's SD or Nasty Plot Lucario, I hit it up with a Heat Wave or a Psychic, depending on how low it is, and I kill it. I have Ice Beam for the Appleton. And then I also have Energy Ball to be able to hit the Mammoth Swine plus the Quagsire. Uh, because those are the main big threats. And then Psychic for Phalanx, of course. Main big threats. This is going to be the... Um this is going to be the main uh, safety blanket to the entire team. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the... Um, did I end up changing this? I don't know if I did or not. I don't remember. Um, so this is going to be one of the main breakers. We have Jolly, Max Speed, Max Attack, Flame Orb, Guts, uh, Obstagoon with Gunk Shot, Facade, Knock Off, and Close Combat. He does not have a switch into this Pokemon literally at all. Everything on his entire team absolutely hates knockoff. This outspeeds this outspeeds or speed ties literally everything on his entire team. So if he doesn't have a scarfer, he can't revenge kill this thing. If I get my I wanted to run uh, obstruct to be able to spam facade, but I needed gunk shot. I could run what did I have gunk shot for? I think I had gunk shot for Grim plus Appleton. I might be able to swap that out for obstruct. I might be able to swap that out for Obstruct. If I do, I'll let you know before the battle, but I really just want to be able to get my Flame Orb activated, destroy something. So, that's kind of where this is. If I can Oko, Max, Fizdef, Grimmsnarl, it might be okay. Anyway, so this is going to be one way that I plan on breaking through the entire team. Another way is with um, my Lapras to be able to clean up with my Steelix. Um, and as I said, I do have... This thing just has such a phenomenal matchup. I'm hoping that it can... I'm hoping it can get 50% off on everything. If it can get 50% off on everything, this Pokemon will have done its job plus some. Next up, we have my Sylveon. Sylveon is here as a really good special check to everything. Uh, I'm rocking the uh, Babiri Berry this week. I have enough defense investment to be able to take uh, multiple hits from Phalanx. Even if he is rocking Iron Head, I don't think he'd run Poison Jab. I think he would run Iron Head. I don't see why he would run Poison Jab over Iron Head, whereas Iron Head hits things neutrally. I don't know. Um, but either way, I can still take, uh, tank a hit as long as he's not like Life Orbed or something like that. But even if he is Life Orbed, then he dies to Sigilyph afterwards. It's not the end of the world. But 
I have Wish Protect, Yawn, and Hyper Voice. This is another way that I plan to break through my opponent's team. He does not have a reliable Hyper Voice resist. His only switch into Hyper Voice is Spadef Torkoal. Everything else pretty much takes at least 30 to 40%. And if I'm able to yawn something, he has to make the choice. Do I let it fall asleep or do I take another Hyper Voice on something? So this is a really, really, really good Pokemon this week. I think it has a lot of potential to just sit there and either wall or be a massive annoyance. And as I said, I need to make sure that I get off the correct damage off on everything. This has a... Um, I made sure that like with uninvested, I do enough to Lucario to be able to two shot it with hyper voice into heat wave or psychic depending on rolls. So really, really reliable wall to this team. And uh, I think that this might be like one of the best Pokemon on the draft. Sylveon just, it, it's just so damn good. So damn good. Next up we have Captain Sniffles, the Surfetched. So Let's talk about this set, because I'm running the Choice Scarf, okay? Choice Scarfed Surfetched, with hardly any attack investment, a lot of speed, and a lot of bulk. So, what this EV spread does. This EV spread guarantees that I outspeed max speed Lucario with my Choice Scarf. If I'm able to get him into the false sense security that I'm not Choice Scarfed, and that I'm like uh, Assault Vest or Heavy Duty Boots with Defog or something like that, then what I can do is I can let Lucario set up until Kingdom Come. I can send this thing in and he will be able to go for uh, close combat, whatever have you. That's not a priority move and I'll be able to Oko it uh, with close combat, of course. I also do outspeed uh, max speed Mammoth Swine since I outspeed Lucario. Uh, I outspeed everything on his entire team, actually. Or, let's say he sets up to plus two, okay? Plus two in either special attack or physical attack. I have enough bulk on this Pokemon to live a plus two Life Orb to Vacuum Wave after Stealth Rocks. I also have enough... Uh, HP plus defense investment to live a plus two extreme speed after stealth rocks or bullet punch after stealth rocks with this captain sniffles so i'm able to reliably check set up uh lucario with pretty much this pokemon in general along with forcing so many switches his only reliable switch into this is torkoal and his only reliable switch in to my obstagoon is also his torkoal if i'm able to pressure that torkoal enough then my um my Steelix has a field day, and it should be easy after that once I weaken the Torkoal. But that is going to be the team that I'm bringing this week. I'm hoping that my Obstagoon does the work that I want it to. But guys, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. Thank you all so much for watching. If you did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like down below for me. Also, make sure that you go check out my opponent, Vivid. Really good friend of mine, and I'm sure that you guys would like his stuff. But with that, as I said, I'm going to get on out of here. Remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.